Hello, welcome to the show. If Java is the earth, then messaging would be the lakes and rivers, and the oceans would be the databases. If Java Enterprise is a body made of organs, messaging would be the nervous system that sends information around. Like when you stub your toe, it sends the information from your toe to your brain so you know you've been hurt. People often say that JMS gives us asynchronous abilities using words like scalability, but it takes a bit of investigation to figure out what that really means. But basically it turns a static application into a dynamic software organism. And here's why. Imagine a person used your website to insert a row into your database. However, the database is fully occupied at that moment. So, like a receptionist having to deal with five people talking at once, that database will tell you that uh, your transaction can't be processed right now, but you're welcome to try again in a few minutes. So the user gets a message like, please try again in a few moments. With JMS, it's like a guy standing around, seeing that you're having trouble getting through to the receptionist. So he'll offer to hold your package or your message for you, and he'll promise to give it to the receptionist whenever they're freed up. Most of the time, those processes will only take a few seconds to maybe 30 seconds to a few minutes. Uh, the kind of experience you get when you're checking your credit score or making a payment with your credit card or stuff like that that has a long process in the background. Um, but the great messaging servers will work on your problem for you for hours and even days and even send an email confirming that it's finished its work at the end. So you find out that it actually did what it promised to do. So you see messaging is a beautiful part of Java that mimics a reliable friend or a reliable business. Bad businesses will simply blow their customers off when its workload is too much. Using something like JMS will help your business survive and earn customer loyalty and happiness. Looking at this slide, what does Java or JMS have to do with mothers? With servers, you have things like application servers, web servers. For JMS servers, uh, it's usually called message-oriented middleware. So that's the fancy name for that. Uh, and on a parallel note, uh, moms are always on our asses, getting us to do things, even uh, when we're not totally mentally prepared or able to do it that second. So like the receptionist example earlier, uh, sometimes people can't get things done that moment, but they can uh, start serving you maybe a few minutes later but you don't really have time to stick around. Uh, but in this case, uh, mothers are always trying to get us to pick something up or uh, clean something or uh, organize something right at that moment, but we often uh, make the statement that uh, we'll get to it whenever we can. And that's what JMS allows us to do in the context of Java Enterprise applications. Sometimes databases just can't serve you that moment or a web service just can't serve you that moment it's already handling hundreds of people reaching its maximum peak but it can serve you when one or two people stop using that service and it's available one slot for you so JMS watches for that slot and takes the opportunity to squeeze in there and get your stuff done automatically it's the postal service of the Java world. FedEx, UPS, and USPS all have something called logistics. 
It's basically a big word for having a plan. It's their internal system or their strategy to figure out how to always consistently get package from point A to point B. But instead of sending paper mail or physical packages, you can think of it as uh, sending electrons or pulses of electricity in the form of data. JMS tends to send strings as text messages or uh, sometimes in plain bytes if it's sending maybe a PDF or an Excel sheet. Um, but it c can also send a myriad of other objects. And if you had a house in Java land, JMS would deliver those things straight to your door. And sometimes it'll just leave it at the door, walk away. Sometimes it wants to see you uh, receive the package so it knows that you got it. But the really strict JMS mailmen want a signature. Just like in real life, uh, you have to acknowledge that you got the delivery and you have to sign it so that the mailman can go back to his uh, headquarters and mark into his system that you officially got your package. But uh, what if you got the package, you sign for it, and while processing it halfway, your power goes out or your connection goes out? Uh, many people have the question, will that mailman come back and re-deliver that same package? Or is that data lost forever? Well, if you configure everything strictly, uh, marking things with the right configurations, um, if you never get to the end of your processing and send back, like, okay, I'm done, the JMS server, or the mom, uh, will send it to your neighbor or someone that processes things similar the way you do. So it might send it to your neighbor or someone you know. Uh, we're talking in terms of components here. Uh, so it sends it to clones of you, whoever's online and ready to receive and process it. So if you set it to strict transactions, nothing should ever just disappear. JMS is like an elephant. It never forgets. It lives on our private island. It can, but sometimes it lives in an application container, which makes it less of an island. But in modern cases, it lives in a cluster. And when an island sinks or a node goes down, it can hop onto another node. And even when the main server goes down, if you marked messages as uh, durable and persistent, it has ways of storing those messages um, to even resist power outages or total shutdowns. But there's chances it could still get lost, but theoretically, the great servers make sure that doesn't happen. And whenever it sends mail out and no one accepts it or no one can accept it, it goes into a dead mail pile. It doesn't just disappear or get destroyed, it just lays there. So whoever is your manager or your coworker that's good at business or good at debugging and analyzing why things are the way they are, they can look in that dead mail pile and see which messages did not get to where it was going. And why is that so? So that pile could be used uh, to sort of debug and think about what's going wrong in your application. So JMS is very protective of information because it's used in like banks and stuff. Money has to go from point A to point B and if it disappears in the middle that's a big problem. So it makes sure not to do that. So JMS is a genie that makes your scalability wishes come true. It gives elasticity to your applications. It makes it more dynamic. Things don't have to happen this very second. It can happen anytime it can get to it. And 
instead of covering vanilla JMS, we're gonna cover something more related to Spring. It's called Rabbit MQ, and you see it on Heroku, and you see it on Cloud Foundry. So it seems pretty credible, and after using it, it seems very strong and very independent, and it's very easy to cluster. So when we start coding, we're going to be using RabbitMQ.